Previously, Robbie and Justine sailed up the west coast of Vancouver Island. We made our way down the Johnston Strait, speeding along with the wind and current to Campbell River, which is about halfway down the east side of the island. my way out of the water at Campbell River because of the convenience of being in walking distance from all the hardware stores. Our friends from Zabalos could also come and visit us easily here. First thing we're seeing is we gotta sand her down. Make her nice and smooth. I would almost scrape. Scrape and sand, I would do both. We have to, we have to remove all the oil out of the Yeah. We are never sanding. This one might be a bit stuff. Yeesh. He's just digging at her, eh? That's good. As long as the layer keeps on coming off, you keep on digging or what? More or less, yeah. If it comes off easily, it means the water has gone in there. Okay. The rest is all good. There was just a bit of water that got in there. And Blisters, or osmosis, is where the salt water penetrates the fiberglass or the gel coat layer. I scraped and I scraped, revealing just a couple of fiberglass blisters on the hull, but many more gel coat ones, unfortunately, on the rudder. I opened up the blisters, let them dry, ground them out, mixed up some epoxy with filler, and then sanded it all down. Once all the blisters had dried out, had been epoxied, and were sanded down, she was ready to paint. Changing the, the attachment of the mainsail, we didn't want it in the cockpit anymore, so this pulley was down by our feet in the cockpit. And it wasn't very nice. We moved the sheet, the rope controlling our main on the boom here to the back. We've just done a mock version of it here with some leftover rope. And this frees up the space in our cockpit quite a bit. I 
ST. My Way was on the hard for one week. In that time, Robbie replaced a seized toilet and valve. We repaired blisters on the hull, painted, and worked on reducing wobbling in the rudder. We said goodbye to the narrow, surging waters of Campbell River and continued towards Vancouver. at Hornby Island, where our friends Humphrey and Claire brought us to the free store. We traded in old clothing for a used frying pan and a sun hat. Aha! I finally managed to convince you to tighten the stay. The top one doesn't have a hole or what? The holes are only on the bottom pieces. <laughs> Here we are again, flying wing on wing as usual, downwind, and I don't know if it shows on the thing, but we are literally flying here. We've actually got a surfboard, not a sailboat. No, no wipeouts, please. One of my favorite recipes under sale is making popcorn. It's easy and fast. Like, such a long surf, you're just like 10.4, 10.6, 11, like, we'll go back to 7.7, 0.8. So slow. I know, we're only doing 8 knots average almost. It's hard to get one because the wake of the boat is kind of destroying all the waves, they, they all lose right behind the boat. Yeah. So you want to lose it comes a little more sideways. Everybody's heading through Dodd Narrows right now, there's a big rush to get towards Nanaimo and we're just leaving Nanaimo and heading to Vancouver and once we head under that bridge, that Burrard Street Bridge, we're gonna know that we've officially circumnavigated uh, Vancouver Island. Last year around this time I was laid off from farm work in the Victoria area and we headed to Vancouver where I then remember filling out paperwork for getting my teaching job in Zabalis and we headed out from there to the west coast of the island, up to Zabalis and exactly one year later almost now, we come back to Vancouver. Ah, this for of July, no? What? June, July, yeah, this is the 4th of July, no? No, it's almost, it's August. Woo! 
And just like that, we were done circumnavigating. I recognize this boat. We met our new friends from 100 White Rabbits on their sailboat Pino, who were also heading down the coast. We briefly planned on joining their armada, but Robbie's US visa rigmarole ended up taking just a little bit longer than we thought. We also made new friends with another boat in Falls Creek. They had a sweet little kitty who made himself at home on our sailboat. As a goodbye gift, he shat on our new dinghy, and he pissed on our life jackets. What a little asshole. We worked on some last minute projects, like sealing the companionway door, so that it would be half its size, and we wouldn't have to worry about a big wave soaking the inside of the boat. We bought a couple dollars worth of PVC pipe and tried some new configurations for shade in the cockpit. We loaded onto the deck our brand new hard shell dinghy, which our friend helped us pick up in a different part of town. There was an attempt to do some provisioning at Granville Island Market, but mostly we just got distracted. Really We set up the brand new auto tiller, which we had picked up in Nanaimo earlier. It would make life much less complicated, especially during night watches. We left Vancouver, and the Georgia Strait was rocking and howling that day, with 30 knot gusts. to the Victoria area, and the next morning, within four hours, we had stopped in at the MEC, provisioned at the bulk barn, and made a quick stop at the Valley Village. Hey, la, 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 in Port Angeles for a sunset customs check-in.
towards Nia Bay, the Juan de Fuca Strait was just a mess of fog and current and wind. We beat into the wind for most of the day and then ran backwards several miles to take refuge in a small cove for the night. We're supposed to get to Nia Bay, but we got hit by like crap and more crap and extra crap on the side, you know, just to make sure that we didn't get there. We were like, goodbye everybody, see you in San Francisco, like, see you when I'm the only one on top of. This is the United States Coast Guard Sector Puget Sound, United States Coast Guard Sector Puget Sound, Salmon Trawler 600, in vicinity of 15 miles west of Port Angeles, in approximate position 48-14, decimal 17 north, 123-43, decimal 80 west. This vessel does have zero steering as and is in restricted visibility. All vessels transiting this area are advised to navigate using extreme caution. Any vessel in the area able to assist is, is requested to contact this unit. We still haven't seen him. He's up there. He's more north. He's like right in the middle of the shipping lane. Ah. This was our introduction to the fog. We would become very familiar with the fog. When we finally reached Nia Bay, we had strong westerly winds blowing in our face. We had high hopes that as we left Nia Bay, we would round Cape Flattery and encounter northwesterly winds to push us down the coast.